Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. A quartic one. Why quartic? Because we get x to the fourth power if we expand everything. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first method. And the first method may be incomplete because we're going to deal with a quartic equation. Anyways, let's go ahead and expand it. The left hand side should be fairly easy. x to the fourth power minus 8x cubed plus 16x squared. You could also take out an x and square tip separately. Wouldn't matter. It's the same thing. And then right hand side x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 8 which is plus 12. Now let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. x to the fourth minus 8x cubed. Now 16 minus 1 is 15x squared plus 4x minus 12 is equal to 0. Now, this is a quartic equation, and the quartic formula, trust me, is very complicated. It does not even fit on the screen. You kind of have to scroll to the right like crazy to be able to see the whole thing. I mean, if you want to be able to read it, obviously. But if you get a really super duper small version like font 1, whatever, then you could probably fit it on a screen. Anyways, so that's the quartic equation and the quartic formula. Um, if we're lucky, uh, we're going to get rational solutions and we can definitely go ahead and check some of these solutions from here. And what are those going to be like? They're going to be factors of 12. So when you consider factors of 12, you're going to have to consider the negatives as well. Plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, and plus minus 12. So we have like 12 candidates. Great, right? 12 has 12 divisors. <laughs> All right. And that's another interesting question like which numbers, which number K has K divisors? That would be a good number theory problem, don't you think? And I don't even know how many solutions that uh, problem has. But anyways, we can talk about it in the comment section. But anyway, so these are candidates. And checking one is kind of easy because that's basically about the sum of the coefficients, if you quickly check, 1 plus 15 is 16. 8 plus, um, actually, I should also add the 4. 16 plus 4 is 20. And negative 8 plus negative 12 is also negative 20. Wow, we got a solution. Awesome. Let's go ahead and proceed with that. So x equals 1 is a solution, right? You can easily check that. And obviously, with the original problem, it will be a lot easier because 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Great, 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Awesome arithmetic skills. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. That's going to be 1 plus 8, which is 9. And negative 3 squared is 9. Great. So x equals 1 is a solution. How do we proceed? We could go ahead and divide this by x minus 1 by factor theorem. and Or you could just arrange it like this. x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 7x cubed plus 7x squared plus 8x squared minus 8x plus 12x minus 12, because I know some folks don't like this idea, but I really like breaking it down like this because this emphasizes the fact that x minus 1 is a factor and also makes factoring a little easier. It's much better than long division, trust me, or synthetic division. Anyways, um, x cubed times x minus 1 minus 7x squared times x minus 1 plus 8x times x minus 1 plus 12 times x minus 1. And then x minus 1 out, we get x cubed minus 7x squared plus 8x plus 12. Whole thing is equal to 0. Now, this is not a huge improvement, even though it's a big improvement, because we still end up with a cubic, which we have to solve. Can we use rational rule theorem again, like looking at factors of 12? Sure, you can, but I don't think you're going to be that lucky. I don't even know. We'll find out with the second method. All right? But you can proceed with the same method. Obviously, 1 is not a solution anymore because 1 plus 8 plus 12 is 21. That doesn't work. How about negative 1? And negative 1, there's a way to check it. You can add the odds and even separately like these two and those two. That gives us 9 and 5. It's not going to work either. So negative 1 and 1 are not going to work. How about a 2? How about a negative 2? So on and so forth. So there's a lot of candidates. So it might take a while. But if there are any rational solutions besides 1, You'll find them this way. Make sense? So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at this. And I just want to show you what my uh, second method is going to look like. All right? 
Okay, let's go ahead and yes, I'm also going to show you the results from Wolfram Alpha. I'm not sure if I made a graph of this, probably did, and I'll show you that too. Okay, cool. Let's proceed with the second method because we're going to look at a couple other things. So, so the second method actually uses a nice method, a nice idea because it deals with identities, right? Hopefully you noticed when you saw this problem. Okay, here, here's one thing that's interesting. I do see a difference of two squares, but do you think that's going to help us? I doubt it. But here's the thing. If you expand x minus 2 squared, and why would I do that, right? Well, because of the presence of x squared minus 4x. So if you expand this, you should get x squared minus 4x plus 4. And that's it, plus 8. And then on the left-hand side, what do you have? x squared minus 4x, and that is squared. What do you see? Hopefully you see what I see, and that is the presence of the same thing. So x squared minus 4x is actually repeated, but you can only see it after you expand the right-hand side. Don't expand both, because then you're going to miss it. Make sense? So now I can call this something, right? The method is called substitution, and it's awesome. Let's go ahead and call it t, and that's going to give us t squared equals t plus 4 plus 8, which is t plus 12. Awesome. And this equation is very easy to solve. You can guess and check, or you can use the quadratic formula, or you can factor. Now think about it. We are looking for two numbers whose product is negative 12 and whose sum is negative 1. And those numbers are easy to find negative 4 and 3. Of course, if you haven't dealt with trinomials and factoring before, this might be a little hard or time-consuming, but consider the following. Look at all the factors of negative 12, and then choose the one that gives you a sum of negative 1 among those, like 1 times negative 12, 2 times negative 6, 3 times negative 4, 4 times negative 3, and 6 times negative 2, and 12 times negative 1. You only have these options because negative 3 and 4, we already covered that, you don't need to go through it. And among these, the only one that gives us a sum of negative 1 is going to be 3 times negative 4. Make sense? Great. Now we can do the following. t minus 4 times t plus 3 equals 0. From here we get t equals 4 and t equals negative 3. But what is t? t is x squared minus 4x. Let's go ahead and do it. x squared minus 4x is equal to 4. And x squared minus 4x is equal to negative 3. And at this point, again, you can use the quadratic formula or something else. But I'll just add 1, I mean not 1, 4 to both sides because that's going to give me a perfect square. By the way, this method is called completing the square. From here, x minus 2 becomes plus minus 2 root 2 because you have to square root both sides, and then adding 2 will give you these two solutions. If you do the same thing here, add 4 to both sides, then you're going to get 1, and then you're going to get integer solutions from here because x minus 2 is going to be plus minus 1. If you add 1, 2 plus minus 1, you're going to get x equals 3 and x equals 1. So those are going to be pretty much all the solutions. In total, we have four solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha's results. Yay! We got the same thing. Great. Awesome. It checks. And the graph also shows you those solutions. Kind of confusing, but look at these intersection points, the dots. Those are the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.